So today we're building a Mark 8 Pigeon. And uh, what I'm going to do is we're going we're gonna to basically walk through the entire build process of a Mark 8 Pigeon. Now, all of our parts are already post-processed or um, all supports have already been removed. But we're still going to go through each part and talk about some things that are frequently sanded down and post-processing little hints here and there. Um, and just some, some overall things to know is I'm, no, I'm not perfect at this. You might see a couple mistakes here or there. But I am going to try my best to verbally let you guys know what kind of things will help you evade as many problems as possible as you build this blaster. So to get started, we're going to get the handle or the frame going first. What we're working with here is the frame. We're going to assemble our mag release and throw on the scales. Uh, the scales are a, pretty much a piece of cake. Um, what you might need to do is take a knife and kind of shave this edge down a little bit or this edge down a little bit so that way it fits into the contour of the grip here. So that way it's a little bit easier to line up the holes. But that's the gist of it. And what we're going to use is we're going to use two little bitty motor screws on each one. Um, and as we do this, we want to be careful not to strip it. It's really easy to strip. It's a little screw. So just take your time and make sure you're lined up with the hole as you go. So here we go. We just threw this on. Um, do remember, sometimes there can be some burrs down here, so you might need to shave that off just to make sure the whole thing sits nice and flat against the handle, and we'll get moving on to the other one. And there we go, the scales are on. You can tell you, it went well if you don't see any light you know, coming through the gaps here. Now for the mag release, what we're gonna need is we're gonna need this little spring here. As much as there are two holes here, one little spring will do the trick just fine. Um, we're gonna feed it through first and get it in there and put that gap in and then slide our spring in that place, just like that. And you can see that's where it's gonna grip onto the mag with this tooth and that's how it goes. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this end cap, I guess you'd call it an end cap, on the end there. It's a little bit of a tricky hold, but we're going to use just a standard full length shell screw to get that put together. And there we go. We've got a talon mag right here. You can always test it before you throw everything together. You're basically going to feed it in and you'll feel it click, or hear it click rather, and then you pull it back and it'll fall right out. Piece of cake. And there you have it. What we're going to do next is the trigger assembly. We're going to need our pusher, our pusher link, of course our trigger, and then these gears. A problem that you can deal with is you can get everything put together, but the trigger pull and the blowback action will still be kind of stiff. So I'm going to give some hints to help that become a little smoother. For one, on the pusher link, you can see this turned out a little a little grody, but something that helps is to take um, a tool such as this or just a knife and come around in each section. And I'm not doing, I'm not being too aggressive here, just kind of showing the principle. This one has a good fit, but kind of just go around the interior of these loops and make sure that these holes are a little widened because sometimes that elephant's foot can actually make the hole a little smaller. And as for the pegs that go in these holes, it also helps to take a file this is a little overkill, but take a file and just kind of go around the perimeter of each of these little pegs that's going to go in the hole. And to test it, small peg, small hole, if you can rotate this around like a joint and you don't feel much friction going on, then you know it's, it's not going to be too much of a problem later. And the same goes for this peg in the larger hole of the pusher link. It helps to go around with a file and take off a decent amount to just shrink it a little. Um, something I already did is I put a little dab of lube in this little trench here uh, for when we put it into the pusher mount just to help it be a little smoother. Something to look out for though, probably before you put the lube in, is to take a small file and take out the elephant's foot that can be sitting here. 
this will actually make this little trench a little smaller and then it won't flow, it won't slide as well in the pusher mount. So there we go. If we can move this just kind of with one finger, it doesn't need to glide if we let go, but if we can move it pretty easily, then we know, we know we're on the right track. What we'll do now is we'll put our pusher link right on top of that, line up those two holes and use a full length shell screw to get it all put together. And that is actually gonna go through to the other side, but that's not too much of a big deal. Um, something to note here though, is the tightness of this screw. We don't want it to be so tight that it doesn't let our pusher move easily. Like this is really, really rough. What we'll do is we'll just loosen it another quarter or half turn from there so that we can slide nice and easily. Now we're gonna kind of slide the trigger on top of this and then line up the trigger into that hole and there you have it. As we push and pull the trigger, there's no spring at the moment, we should see the action moving smoothly. Um, something to look out for is that this entire groove is nice and smooth. What you wanna do, if it isn't, is take a small file and just run it, run it back and forth pretty aggressively, um, just taking off any hairs or bumps that might be along there. You know, make sure you feel it with your finger. A drop of lube can help, but filing will do the, do the best. Also, along these pillars, there sometimes can be a little bit of excess from the printer. Sometimes you can take the file along those spots and just make sure the, that these pillars end up being round so that way they don't rub too much on the gears, so that way the gears can spin freely and independently. Additionally, something I like to do while I'm here is take a larger file, probably, or a knife and run the file back and forth along this edge going all the way around. The slide is going to be sliding around this constantly, and it's nice to make sure that this elephant's foot is taken off, so that way the slide doesn't have anything to work against here. But the general rule for this is isolate a part, make sure that it can move wherever it's supposed to be, and if it can't, find the problem, file that down, get it out of the way, put some lube on, and see where that takes you. Now, we're not gonna put the spring in just yet, we're gonna work on the other side and uh, get the blowback mechanism going. As for these gears, you probably shouldn't have to do any filing of the gears, um, but you'll find out if you need to do that by testing as you go. So what I recommend you do first is test without any gears and feel how smooth it is. If that's pretty smooth, then you move on to the next gear, which is gonna be this little guy in this left-hand slot. And if we can move this back and forth without too much resistance, then we know that this gear is spinning well. And then we're gonna put in our next gear. And that just pops right in right there. And if that also glides nicely, then we know that the gears are combining well and they're not causing too much friction. And then lastly, we're gonna put in the blowback. Um, what I recommend is taking a blade of some sort and shearing off the elephant's foot on either side. So that way it can, it'll actually help it slide a lot smoother in this groove here. Make sure that this slides smoothly and then we know that as we connect it all together, it should work nicely. Remember though, if you do have to do any filing, I recommend just a small file and just kind of go, almost like you're flossing your teeth between each tooth of the gear and basically how it should all work out. All right, so what we're gonna be doing next is the soldering, which will probably sound scary to some. Just FYI, I'm not perfect at this. You'll probably see some parts of it and think that it's pretty sloppy, but it's not too bad. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our cage is clean, make sure that there's room for the motors and make sure that there's nothing in the way of the dart when it will be leaving and make sure we keep that peg safe. We're gonna mount the two Honey Badger motors in the cage first. Make sure that these red and kind of clearish white, make sure that those are inverted. That's gonna be really important to make sure the motors are spinning in the correct directions. The way I like to always remember to do this is just put the letters out. If the letters are pointing out, then you're good to go. Be careful with these tabs. They do bend easy and they can break off. Something you'll want on hand are these printed tools that'll help you assemble the flywheels, help you put them onto the motors. So we'll get started on that. What I like to do immediately as soon as I put the motors in is just put this cap on just to make sure those tabs are protected. We're gonna need our screwdriver, we're gonna need our motor screws, and we're also gonna need Loctite. Really does come in handy because we don't want these screws coming loose. This can get a little messy, so it might be a good idea to keep a paper towel on hand. But we're just gonna put this is how I like to do it. You can put it on the individual screws, but I like to just put a little drop on each hole just to make sure. Oh, 
So a trick that I like to use to help these work out is I almost push through the plastic and then start turning as soon as I get close to the motor. So I'm going to attempt to show you this one here. Hopefully I don't fumble it too much. I'm just going to make sure that the shaft of the screw is going straight down because as much as the screwdriver may be straight, the shaft may not be. And you may need to play with it and try different directions to get it in there straight. But you're just going to apply good pressure and go, and you'll feel it, the, the, the uh, screw grab the threads in the motor. And then once again, you're just going to bring it to a good hand tight. Nothing ridiculous, just a good hand tight, and they should be flush with the plastic. Just kind of take a paper towel and dab out whatever's left of the Loctite. So now what we're going to do is we're going to throw on our flywheels. Just as we said, we're going to put these flywheels on these motor shafts. Make sure you always have some sort of counter pressure on the back side because we don't want to end up breaking anything. We want to basically be applying pressure through this to the backs of these motors. So make sure that's on nice and snug and then get the flywheels on there started. We want to make sure that as we start it, that it's nice and straight on the shaft. This is going to take a lot of pressure, but you want to get each one started on either side. And then what we're going to do, is you can tell by the shape of this, this was meant to push down these flat wheels to the correct depth on the motor shafts. So we're basically just going to set this down on the table and slap that on top and give it good top pressure. Um, I like to take like the card that comes with the wheels to kind of cushion my hand so I don't tear it up. So it does take a lot of pressure. Sometimes you kind of got to put your back into it, get some elbow grease going. But this is what we want the final product to be. We want the, as you look down where the dart is going to feed, you want to see those flywheels nice and centered in the middle of the hole and of course equal to each other. If one's higher than the other, you're not gonna have a very accurate blaster or you could have worse problems. So we're gonna get started on the soldering. This is what we had earlier. Make sure the wheels are done first before we start soldering. We're gonna be assembling, of course, the Talon version. Um, basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna solder the connections here and this is gonna go on top. So you just need to make sure your wire management is good enough to fit in the little gaps that we're gonna have going. And more detail will be given as we go. If you don't know how to solder, I recommend that you go watch an actual video explaining the principles of soldering. I'm going to go over a little bit. What I like to do to start off is actually take a Sharpie and uh, I like to mark where I'm going to be stripping the coating off of the wires. So we're going to feed both of our wires um, like so on the motors and then they're going to come out the front here. That's kind of the end goal. So I'm going to do one at a time. Just kind of going to hold it here and make sure that there's enough space for uh, the gap of the motors. So this is what we're going for, just little marks to let us know where we need to clean the wires for assembly. We're going to use our wire strippers here. And there are, there are a million ways to do this, I'll show you the way that I like to. Strip it off, of course, give it a twist to make sure it doesn't fray too much. The way I like to do it here is give a snip and a little bit of wiggle, I guess, on either side and then just peel that off with my nails. And then boom, we've got our gap where we can connect it to the tab accordingly. And then the same for the other. So this is the goal. We want nice little gaps that are equal width of the tabs on the motors. And that's what we're going to work with. Now, hopefully our soldering iron is nice and warm and ready to go. You can follow along and add your expertise as we go. We're going to tin each contact, basically. We're going to tin all four tabs and we're going to tin these four connections through the insulation. A basic principle is to avoid putting solder directly on the iron, like I almost did just there. What we're going to do is heat up the material and then apply the solder.
something you might want to do beforehand is actually gently fold down each tab of the motors inward. So these will fold this way and these will fold this way. It doesn't need to be clear down to the surface, but at kind of a nice 90 degree angle, probably about a third up of the way of the tab. So that way it doesn't take up as much height and we're less likely to rub against the trigger or make this cover protrude too much. And now we're gonna move on to tinning our wires. Okay, and now we're gonna simply connect. Now, there's no specific way to do this. Like I said, add your expertise that you may have over mine. The basic principle is heat up the solder over here that was tinned to the tab, and heat up also this side, and then put them together and let it cool and harden. Um, sometimes the wire might get a little warm, so maybe you'll want a pair of pliers on hand or however you wanna do it, but just keep that in mind. So what you just saw here is actually I kind of bent the wire as I let it dry or as it was heating up. That can help with wire management, just make sure everything's nice and compact. This is kind of our end goal. This is what we, in general, want it to look like. The point is, is we can make sure that if we tug on these, they're not gonna pop right off. They're nice and stiff. They're nice and connected and solid. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on the switch and then the XT60 connector. This is the Micro 21A switch. When you receive this from us, this tab should already be broken off. But if for some reason it's not, or you got yours elsewhere, what you're gonna do is put the black side towards you, bend it up, and then uh, point the black side away from you and just give some nice perpendicular pressure and pop it right off. And this plastic will actually kind of break, but don't worry about it, it was just to get this tab off. We're gonna need to do a little bit of measuring to make sure that the wire length that we're gonna be using is appropriate for the switch. The switch is going to go in this little cranny here and this hole is going to slide over that peg in there. And what we want to do is make sure that we're gentle in here because we don't want to break anything. There, it slides right on. There's going to be a little bit of play, but that's what it's going to look like. Now we're going to choose a wire. Um, you can choose either one because we can always flip it later, but for this demonstration, I'll use the black one since we can keep it nice and short and just turn it around. You're gonna pull the black wire, make sure it's tucked on this side of the tab, and we're gonna curve it around and kind of put our finger here to measure um, where it's going to come in contact with this elbow here on the switch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut the wire right there, just like that. So now when it comes around, it's kind of hard to show. It's gonna be just the right length to come in contact with the tab, and sorry if the angles were a little awkward there. So we're gonna take the switch out. All right, so we're gonna just strip a little bit off of this guy here, give it a twist, and we're gonna tin that just like normal. And we're also gonna tin our switch on the elbow. We're gonna heat up the elbow and then apply our solder. Now we're gonna take our heat shrink and we're gonna cut probably like a, it's about a centimeter, half inch or so off. Um, and we're gonna slide it over our black wire that we've been working with. And then we're gonna solder this, these two things together. And I would wait on sliding the heat shrink on until it's nice and cool, just so we can get it to look nice. What we're gonna need to do for the barrel to fit later correctly, is we're actually gonna need to bend these two tabs down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend them towards the elbow. We're gonna bend them forwards. So I like to just take these needle nose and just give it a bend, just like that. That's what we're going for. And then bend the next one on top of that. So what, what it should look like roughly. And we're gonna clamp that guy in. We're gonna choose our black wire to keep up with the original connection. We're gonna 
do the same old. Hopefully this is coming together nicely. We're gonna tin this. And remember, it's gonna be, there's gonna be this one, there's gonna be a gap between the elbow and the one that we're gonna connect to. We're gonna connect to the far one from the elbow of the switch. All right, so now we're just gonna connect these two, heat up the solder, and put the other one in. Let that solidify, make sure it's nice and sturdy. And we're also gonna put some heat shrink on that. Once again, like a half inch or so. And now that we've slid our heat shrink into place, we like to just use a lighter and gently hold it under real quick to quickly heat up that heat shrink and get it to, of course, shrink into place. All right, so that's our end goal for this part. Make sure the short wire doesn't get in the way so we can get the switch into its groove. And we're gonna gently get the switch into its notch and slide it on just like that. And then this wire is gonna come out this way. And this red wire is just gonna get out of the, go through everything and come out the front here. What I like to do to get a proper length for the wires, of course you can change it to how you want, is we like to slide the barrel onto the cage here. If there's any concern, make sure there's not any leftover supports or filament hairs lying around. And what I like to do to judge the length of these wires is just kind of pull it out past the barrel and you probably want to snip it about an inch past. That kind of makes it convenient for, for putting the battery in later. So that's like an inch past roughly. And we're just going to snip it right there on both ends, keep an equal length. And we're going to strip the insulation off of these two and twist and tin them accordingly. So while we're tinning these, we wanna make sure that we don't leave too big of a glob on the end because we're gonna to need to th fit these wires into a thin space. We are gonna take our XT60 connector. Um, it's likely you received two, both a male and a female. Um, however, we're gonna be using the female. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be connecting into these two holes and then this is gonna to go to the battery later. So we're gonna to wanna to double check the polarities or however you wanna to refer to it. Um, to make sure that we're gonna make the motor spin the right direction. Because we're either gonna put red over black over here and make the motor spin backwards or forwards or vice versa. So we'll need to test that real quick. Um, it can be as simple as really just pinching a battery and you'll hear the motors turn on as we make the connections. As long as your fingers aren't wet, this shouldn't zap you, but I'm no expert electrician, it hasn't zapped me yet. <laughs> just kinda hold that together and look at the wheels as you look at them, they're spinning, but you can't really tell which way they're spinning. So I like to trace my finger over it and see which way my finger wants to move. Judging by what I'm feeling here, checking both motors, I can tell that the motors are, are spinning in the correct direction. So I'm gonna look at my battery and say, okay, black is positive. And then look at my XT60 connector. Right here, it's a little negative symbol. So black is not going there. Black is going on the bottom and red is going on the top and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna slide our heat shrink on before we solder it into the XT60 connector. When I am soldering this, I like to just let this rest in here about that far, and then in that gap, I'm going to be sticking the soldering iron and the solder. As you're doing this, make sure you're heating up both the wire and the housing in the connector. So that way the solder can join to each surface. After you let it cool for a minute, just make sure you can tug on it and it doesn't pop right out. We're gonna flip that around and put our black on the other side. And there we have it. We're gonna let our heat shrink slide down and cover each connection. And there we have it, this is the assembly for the motor, barrel, and switch. All right, so now we're gonna put everything together. I recommend taking the barrel off for a moment so that way we can watch the switch be guided into place. 
And what also can help is putting this pin in right now just to get it started. We already had this drilled out to make sure that the pin fit properly. So you might need to take a small drill bit such as this and uh, zing that real quick to make sure that the pin fits properly. Now that we've got this nice and secure, it's functioning okay, we're gonna slide this into place. And this is just gonna come straight down on top of everything and just watch that switch pull the trigger back about halfway and that'll let the switch fall into the trigger groove right here. So you just need to make sure that you guide the switch and don't force it so that way everything falls into place. So now that we've got the cage and the trigger assembly together, I'm just gonna throw the barrel on, slide it on gently, make sure we're not pinching any wires as we go. There we go, right in place. I'm actually gonna let you know about some things that may come up. For example, this hole right here, we're gonna be putting a pin in this in a moment. What you may need to do is take 3 16 drill bit and just quickly go in and out um, to make sure that that hole is clear. What we're gonna be using for the pin, of course, is these three parts. Uh, these will come later, but this pin, you can notice there's kind of a flat edge right here. So what you may need to do is take a file and along that elephant's foot from the printer, gently round that out and just make sure that the whole thing is round. So now that we, we've drilled this out, we're just gonna, and now that we've cleaned up our pin as well, we're gonna put that in there gently, all right? These can break pretty easily. So it may become stiff at points. You might need to just tap it a little to get it the rest of the way, but we shouldn't be forcing these too much. You can also, in fact, lubricate that if needs be. Now we're gonna take our slide locks, and as you can tell, there's gonna be one on either side. Uh, the wings are gonna point up. So this one's gonna fit right here, and we're gonna use a full length shell screw, and we're just gonna go straight through this into that hole there. So now that we've got that rigged up, it should be tight enough, obviously, to not be flopping everywhere, but we also don't want it to be so tight that we can't move this up and down gently. This is, this is part of the function. We want it to be able to move up and down. Now, we're actually gonna wait to put this second one on in case we need to pop this out and troubleshoot something going on in the inside. So we're gonna leave that off for the time being. As for the slide, we've got all our supports off and we're ready to go. I just wanna go over quickly some things that you're probably gonna to have to file down to get the smoothest blowback action you want. For starters, these grooves along here, you may need to take a file and just gently get rid of any possible bumps or, or imperfections that may cause the slide to work a little less smoothly. Additionally, something that may be an issue is as the slide rolls back over this ridge here, the slide may actually rub this edge against these edges here. So an easy fix for that is taking a file and pretty aggressively going back and forth throughout this entire area. Of course, we don't wanna to be too aggressive and remove this tab. We need this tab for later. Also, make sure you check along this ridge for any imperfections or abnormalities. A common spot that needs filing is this little tooth right here. Sometimes you may need to file it to become a little thinner, top and bottom. Once again, we're just making sure everything's going okay so far. Gotta be careful with that. Make sure you don't let the gear come loose. And we're gonna quickly assemble the slide lock. So we're gonna take a shell screw. And what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna use some snips or some pliers, whatever you have on hand, and you'll actually cut it in half, just like that. And that's how we get the perfect length screw. Sometimes it may need to be a little bit shorter, um, but so that one might actually be a little long. We recommend something about this long. That's probably a quarter inch. Now, when we cut these screws, something you wanna be aware of is you'll notice that it's kind of ugly there. It looks kind of sharp. Um, what you can do is actually take a file to that and gently get rid of those sharp edges so it doesn't tear up the plastic too much after taking it in and out if we need to. So we're gonna get this slide safety put together here. Just like that, line it up. 
and it should be decently tight, but it shouldn't be so tight that you can't move the slide up and down. The slide should be able to move, but it also shouldn't be floppy, you know? Another crucial thing is to make sure that the screw is not longer, or long to the point where, where it uh, protrudes from this surface. It wants to, we want it to be below that, so that way it doesn't rub on anything inside. And there we go, it toggles nicely. Yeah, we'll throw the iron sights on. This is up to you, you can super glue them. Other times they're a nice, stiff fit. I don't think we're gonna super glue these for now, um, but we recommend just basically putting a dab, just a little dot or so, in the trench, and then just sliding the iron sight on top of that, and the glue will hold it together nicely. Of course, make sure it's nice and centered, so that way you can look down it, and it's not obviously crooked. We're gonna throw it onto our main assembly. Make sure that you've got your pins in, otherwise it's gonna be all crooked. And we're gonna slide on the slide from the front. You'll notice this little ridge here. You gotta make sure you get over that ridge. And then we're gonna go all the way back. You'll need to put the switch up so that way it doesn't bump on anything. And then come all the way back. When we get lined up, we're gonna push the switch down and then we can go further back. Now, we're gonna have to backtrack and do a couple other things, but the reason we put it on right now is that way we can make sure that it's sliding nicely. Um, this is another thing that might require a lot of troubleshooting. Um, you're basically just going to need to look at each element that's rubbing and make sure that there's not any leftover prints getting in the way or um, too much friction going on. What you can do is use something like a, like a toothpick to just spread some lube gently on this surface from front to back on either side. Other times, what comes in handy is take off the barrel, put it into the slide alone, and then just rubbing it back and forth a ton on your own. Um, sometimes there can be little bumps along the print here in different layers, so you might need to file those out gently. Um, just make sure this is nice and smooth, and then isolate it, put it in your slide, and make sure it can go back and forth. Um, in my experience, however, the most common culprit is these edges right here that I talked about filing earlier and the inside edges of the slide here. You may need to be pretty aggressive with the file in here to make sure that as you're coming back, it doesn't end up bumping or adding too much friction there. For this part, you're gonna need another small screw cut and we're gonna put this small screw in this little hole right here. If the screw is too long, it'll actually go through this surface and rub on your pusher, which will make the trigger really stiff. We don't want that. We want the screw to be just the right length to fit and uh, be sturdy, but not touch the pusher from the other side. So now that we've got our screw in there, we're gonna put on the rubber band. This part is pretty important because it, it'll make the blowback function. We're gonna use this green one. And we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to double loop it, just like that, twist it and pull it over itself, you know. And then gently put it around that screw that we just put in there. And just like that, we've got the screw, the rubber band around the screw. We're going to tighten that screw down just a little. And the rubber band should pull clear back here. It can be a little tricky because it'll, it'll want to pop out on you. But as soon as you get it in there, it should hold pretty decently. This is a pretty tight rubber band here, so doing our best with it. All right, so now that we've got our rubber band on there under the screw, we're gonna slide the slide on. Oh, look at that, it was bumping the gear. Make sure our gear is down. And then tuck this under our fingers. Keep on bringing it back. Make sure it's in that little trench. Push that tab down so we can keep bringing it back and bring that rubber band up into the tab there. And now we're gonna keep pulling it back and we can feel the rubber band giving it that blowback function now. The tightness of the rubber band determines how stiff your trigger pull is. If your blowback action was a little rough, if the rubber band is stiffer, it's likely to counteract that and do the blowback function nicely. You notice it's pushing forward too much, that's not a problem. What we need to do now is tuck the uh, wires in the front and bring in our tack box. This is an older plug, so yours will look a little different, but it's the same process. We just put the plug in there, 
just like that. You can glue it if you want, it's up to you. And then this will slide on like a rail and come all the way back. And you'll know it's on correctly because you can see straight through that hole there. What you may need to do is take that tiny drill bit again, like we talked about earlier, and drill out this hole as well. After that, this pin should slide in nice and easy and out the other side from here. Now with this secure, this secure, and this secure, the slide should be ready to function as intended. So what we do is we pull the trigger, the slide comes back, we let go of the trigger, the slide goes forward. So it should look something like this. Round of applause. Now, for the last bit, we're gonna throw the other slide lock onto this side. In fact, this isn't the last thing, we've got one more thing to do. We're gonna use a full length shell screw and just go straight through. And remember, we don't want this to be too tight. We want it to be able to move up and down. So that way we can pull the slide back and assuming it goes that far, our rubber band is pretty tight today. We can put that into its notch and the slide stays back. Our last bit is going to be the hammer. Um, usually these are pretty tight fits, so you can almost put it in and forget about it. Um, there's also a slot for a pin if that's your style. However, we recommend just gluing it if you really want it to be sturdy. Just putting in a dab of glue and then just popping this in right on top and it clicks right into place. That is how a Mark 8 is assembled start to finish. So now we've got it together. We're just gonna put the battery in real quick. We took off the attack box by taking out the pin and we're just gonna plug in the battery and it's easiest to then put the battery in first. And after the battery gets past this lip on the slide, then it'll be able to slide back and forth freely. And then we'll tuck the wires in on top of it to the side. Kind of like that. And then test it to make sure it will slide when the trigger's pulled. And we're ready to go. We'll make sure that the pusher is feeding correctly. We slide our mag in and uh, we've got the blowback engaged. We've got a full magazine here. Now we're gonna see how it performs with the chronograph. We had an average of 115 with a high of 137.